The Secret Life of Rock Pools Have you ever heard of tide pools or rock pools? If not, don't worry, we are here to tell you. They're typically the first marine habitats that ocean enthusiasts are introduced to. Rock pools are the ideal place to have a glance into the amazing life of the sea without having to leave the comfort of the land since they become revealed at low tide. Aren't you curious to know more about this interesting deep sea species? Stick around as in this video we will talk about the secret life of rock pools. Before we start, subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this and don't forget to press the bell icon. Having said that, let's begin. Each pool is a little universe in and of itself, teeming with amazing species, some of which are tidal dependent. Seasonal visitors and others of which are permanent inhabitants, although some species may be found often among the neighboring swimming holes. Each one has its distinct ecosystem, with a range of dominating species and resource availability. There are three zones in every tide pool, the splash zone, the intertidal zone, and the subtidal zone. What is splash zone? This area is the most difficult to live in since it is the farthest from the ocean. Only the odd splash or mist from the sea serves as the only source of water, leading to highly severe circumstances, including persistent sun exposure, high temperatures, elevated saline levels, and frequent moisture loss. The only life present here, as expected, is the occasional barnacle and some algae. What about the intertidal zone? Between the splash zone and the subtidal zone is the intertidal zone. Spending some of the days submerged and some of it uncovered makes it almost like the Goldilocks zone of rock pools. This zone, which consists of three sections, has a lot to offer. Nearest to the splash zone is the high zone, which is home to barnacles, snails, crabs and the occasional anemone. The mid zone and low zone come next, which support a greater diversity of species as depth, water, food and shelter grow. Here it's common to see anemones, sea stars, crabs and snails. Lastly, it's turn for the subtidal area. The subtidal zone is where a rock pool is deepest. More invertebrates and even fish may be found in this location since it is continually submerged in water. It's not as easy as one may think to live in an intertidal zone. Because of the nearly continual change in the environment, creatures that live here must be adaptable in their needs and resilient in their reactions. The low intertidal zone, where the majority of life is located, typically stays submerged even when the tide is out as every wave at high tide brings fresh nutrients and plankton which sustains the pool's food web, there is nearly always an abundance of food, nutrients and oxygen in the low intertidal zone, which makes living there simpler. With all the cracks, holes and plants, there is also an abundance of algae and plants as well as a habitat. Life in tidal pools is either pushed out into the open ocean and left there until the tide comes back in or exposed to more predators, such as seabirds. Hard-shelled creatures can securely close their shells, preventing moisture loss during low tide. One of the most potent glues known to man is a DIY superglue, mucus, produced by barnacles. For commercial usage, researchers are working to duplicate it in the lab. When the tide is out, some fish, such as the sculpin and immature opalase, may survive in oxygen-poor water because they have developed the capacity to breathe air. For several reasons, rock pools are significant ecosystems. Tide pools offer coastal protection, as well as educational opportunities for people of all ages, and are great nidification sites for young fish. Supporting both marine and terrestrial food webs is one of the most dynamic functions offered by rock pools. Rock pools are brimming with food to sustain a wide variety of creatures thanks to the mix of algae, seaweed and continuous input of nutrients and phytoplankton from the incoming tides. Energy is eventually transferred up the food chain from plants and microscopic creatures to migratory fish that stop by during high tide and coastal birds who take advantage of the exposure during low tide. When these creatures eventually become part of the food chain themselves, the tidal pool energy cycle is complete. Rock pools are vulnerable to the negative consequences of coastal pollution, climate change, coastal erosion and economic development. Coastal development for hotels and businesses and nearby farms and industrial facilities both release chemicals, oil and other pollutants into the waters. Sea level rise threatens the delicate balance of each pool. Although rock pools are a great area to learn about the ocean, the creatures that reside there may be in danger. The greatest time to explore rock pools is at low tide since it is safe and simple to see wildlife then. Leave no seaweed, pebbles or shells in your wake. That's it for the day guys, we hope you liked the video, please click the like button if you did. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching.